if it is or if it ain't, it's going to come out. Good morning, everybody. It's your girl, Miracle Sims, and you're listening to God, Sex, and Love, your daily dose of inspiration, the juice. It is April the 25th, 2023, and today the topic is prophecy and warnings. Happy Tuesday, everyone. Happy Tuesday. I hope that you all had a great Monday. Mine was just fine. Um, if I do a quick recap, the main thing I did yesterday was participate in a meeting, um, everything like that. Um, I tried to catch up on rest after that. Then I had to do some tasks and whatnot. Um, but that's pretty much what my day looked like in a nutshell. Um, yeah, yeah. I chit chatted with my mom yesterday as well. So that was another, you know, highlight of the day. But yeah, I would say those are the like main things. Um, you know, uh, I appreciate each and every one of you all again that listens, tunes in, shares any of those things. Um, apparently, we reached another goal. They say that we have thirty thousand views on the YouTube channel, so it's a God be the glory for that. Um, you know, I'm noticing that our website is getting a few more hits and whatnot these days, so. To God be the glory, man. I guess the message is getting out about us. I think, like, uh, last time I looked, we're at 525 subscribers. So, again, to God be the glory for each and every one of you all that embark on this journey with us. I call you all love seekers, you know what I'm saying? So, uh, those that are on this journey of love seeking and whatnot, thank you all for joining us on the journey. And we appreciate it, man. We appreciate all the support in any aspect. So, um, this conversation about prophecy and warnings. So, I mean, those of you that watch this video live, you know that your girl is recording uh, much later than usual. It's like almost 7.15 and y'all know it's my intention to have the juice out by 6. But, I mean, again, um, if the Lord sees fit for me to go deeper with, like, looking up verses or ideas or whatever the case is i mean i i tend to do that you know um and so that's pretty much what happened today i mean long story short i woke up i i don't recall waking up at four so when i by the time i looked at my alarm or heard my alarm it said like four thirty. so i must have missed the four o'clock alarm i don't know um and i didn't check to see what the bible verses centered around that time meant or the strong concordance but um I want to say I woke up to the 4.30 alarm this morning. And um, on one hand, there's a lot of things on my mind, you know, because, again, I, I hate to keep telling y'all this, man. But and I feel like am I am I one of those double minded people in this moment? You know, um, I am still going back and forth about the other opportunity that I have yet to share fully with y'all. Um, but on the flip side, I feel like it's important for me to be open and honest and transparent about my journey and, and things that I'm going through because I'm sure, right, this is going to affect someone or probably encourage someone or, um, you know, someone else may be going through a similar thing and you may be seeking the Lord and you feel like you get an answer, but then you feel like, you, you know, you get an opposite answer and you confuse, right? And I know the Bible tells us that, you know, the Lord is not an author of confusion and things like that. Um, but at the same time, I understand, right, the the feeling of, of being like, is this for me or not, Lord? Like, can I get a clear sign? Can I clear, get a clear, you know, um, lit path, you know, <laughs> uh, everything like that? I guess I'm kind of reminded of this sermon that the pastor did over there at Mountain West. And he talked about um, Michael Jackson and how one of his, uh, what's it called? Uh, I guess uh, part of the production crew, um, there was a particular, um, I guess, a show that he was doing or something, and he couldn't see what the person was doing 
But the person, you know, pretty much just said, hey, you know, just just walk forward. And basically with him taking the step forward, it made it look like he lit the path um, that, you know, he put his foot down on. And basically the pastor was saying, like, that's an example of God telling us to walk right Um and the path will be lit, right? But you may not fully understand it or see it from your perspective. And I mean, maybe that's me in this moment, man. Like maybe that is me going back and forth about this other opportunity. I know on one hand, I feel like I have so much peace and joy in my life. And I really don't want to add on anything that's going to take any of that away. And I think I started to ultimately reflect on that this morning. I had, you know, concepts like, you know, uh, I can't even remember everything that I was thinking about this morning, but definitely joy was in the midst of it. And I'm like, well, you know, things that give me joy, things like that. I was looking at Bible since around all of those different things. But ultimately, I guess, you know, as I started to just calm down from my own thoughts, right, calm down from my own the issues of my life and whatnot and started to, I guess, reflect on the things that um, I guess the Lord was wanting me to talk about today. Ultimately, I was reminded of a verse that my mom shared with me yesterday. So um, she said this verse, and I'm going to read it later on. But uh, she said this verse, and she's like, oh, I want to make an image or whatever of this verse and whatnot. And um, so I sent it over to our editor. So shout out to Sammy. You know, he's an amazing part of our team. Um, I sent it over to him to create the, the, you know, the image that she wants to create and everything like that. Well, he sent it back to me done this morning. So in the midst of me, you know, doing, going through my mental thing or whatever, he sent it to me and I'm reading it. And I noticed that he had um, like one word wrong or whatever. And so I, I asked him, could you, um, you know, update that? And I, you know, and I copied and pasted the verse so he can, so I can make sure that everything was right and stuff like that. And so after that, after that, I saw this video. Somehow I, I went to YouTube, I guess, and, and I came across this video of a young child prophesying. So this this is the verse about, you know, um, let me just go ahead and read it. Um, so it's Acts 2 and 17. It says, and in the last days it shall be, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit on all flesh and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy and your young men shall see visions and your old men shall dream dreams. So that was the verse, right? Um, and everything like that. But like I said, after I had that interaction with our editor, um, somehow I ended up on YouTube and I came across this um, short, like this this YouTube short of a um, child. Or m maybe it was on Instagram. It was on one of the, either YouTube or Instagram. But basically, it was this child that I get, it seemed as if he had been, he was sharing a dream or a vision with his family and they was recording it. And he was talking about how, um, I guess he was in some type of classroom and that there was this aisle and I don't know who he was talking to. He just was like, and they told me if I go take the mark that I can get my food or whatever I need. Um, you know, but they did, he said they, whoever, I don't know who they was and whatnot. I'm just seeing a short again. But anywho, um, he said that they said that, um, you know, this is welcoming in Satan or whatever. Or he said Lucifer, if I'm not mistaken. He said that. And then he was like, you know, um, they said I can get food, S, Y, and Z, whatever I need. But then I kept going into a tent. And then they, whoever they again are, said that I can go into this tent. and But I, I wouldn't be able to get food or whatever, whatever. So he said he went into the tent and, and then... Um, at, after I'm, I'm leaving stuff out, I actually shared it on our, um, on our page, uh, the God, Sex and Love Facebook. So by all means, go check it out, um, uh, for yourself so you guys can see everything, uh, see and hear everything, but, uh, of that prophecy, right? Or that dream that that young man was sharing. Um, but he was like, you could see that he was definitely affected by the things he saw, um, and everything like that. And I was kind of missing what it was saying at the end. And so I ended up taking screenshots to make sure I, I was hearing it correctly. But basically, um, the young man said that after he came out the tent, I guess he couldn't find his family. And then he went, I guess, to the, to where he knew they were. And he just saw them in a pile. Um, and then that's where the short and, and thing ended. Now, 
on one hand, I understand like hearing things like that. I mean, I don't know how you feel, right? To to hear such things, right? You're like, oh, that sounds uh, grim or cryptic or, you know, um, bad, like, or whatever the case is, you know? And I guess after hearing that this morning, um, I started to wonder, even though I know the answer, right? But I started to wonder about prophecies. I started to wonder uh, if I should talk about why God tells us things in advance. Um, Now, again, I I can't help but go back to Jonah and the people of Nineveh, right? He went to prophesy to that nation of Nineveh. And again, shout out to that leader as well as, you know, every person in that nation because apparently they repented and God held that prophecy back from them. I think sometimes prophecies and warnings happen for that reason. It's like, hey, you know, you can be saved if you repent. Like you can be saved if you, you know, take heed to these warnings, right? Um, so I believe that that's one of the main reasons why there are prophecies, I mean, uh, and warnings and things like that. But then, um, obviously, you know, um, I'm sure it goes deeper. I ended up going to gotquestions.org and I was just asking a bunch of questions about, um, prophecy and just really reading a bunch of the things that it had to say. Ultimately, it had me start to, um, look into things regarding the tribulation period. And I know people go back and forth about the tribulation period. You know, is is there going to be a pre-trib rapture, a mid-trib rapture, or a post-trib rapture, or however they want to say? Um, I guess, in my little humble opinion, based on Bible, I, I believe that there, you know, there's to be a pre-trib rapture. Um, according to what I understand, that's the ma- next major event in regards to prophecy. Um, and I mean, I feel like there's a lot of things that give that as a um, confirmation that it will be pre-trib um just because i mean any other instance that there was some major thing that happened you know god took his people out you know we saw that with noah we saw that with lot we saw that with a variety of things right and so um i think just based on that right it will behoove us to uh seek the lord and to um, do his will, his way and things like that in advance, uh, do it now. You know, this is the time. It's not the time to, uh, Mom, it's shot? not the time, excuse me, everybody on the podcast and things like that. My son has just woke up and, and things of that nature and I'm live. So that's how it goes. But anywho, um, it's not the time. Go ahead. <laughs> it's not the time to, um, you know, uh, wait, you know, it's like, you need to go ahead and and do it now. Um, believe Jesus and everything like that. And then you can be amongst those that are saved. Right. Um, now on the flip side, I know they, there's scripture and whatnot that refers to those that are, you know, um, that there will be believers uh, during the tribulation. Right. And, We may be wondering, like, oh, what does that mean? Is that proof of pre-trib or is that proof of post? Well, from my understanding, right, um, that those believers are believers that become believers after the rapture. Um, You know, maybe those people, like, are on the fence right now. Maybe those people are, quote-unquote, lukewarm right now. And then when they see, uh, you know, all just people disappearing and whatnot, that confirms things in their hearts and minds. And then... I mean, unfortunately, I guess it's too late at that point to then, uh, you know, be saved in regards from the wrath or whatever um, that is coming to tribulation. But um, obviously, I guess they will hold on to their faith. And even if they get martyred for the faith and whatnot, um, you know, they will rise again X, Y, and Z. Um, Again, you guys got to go deeper and look into all, you know, revelations and all that type of stuff to see more in regards to that, but, um, these are the things that I was engulfing my mind this morning, and one of the questions that I did have that I don't know if I received the answer for yet is, will we all know that it's the tribulation period? Because I, I feel like with everything that's happening, like, right now, sometimes it feels like, is this the tribulation period now? Like, I mean, or is things going to get worse than the way it is now? Um... So that's something I go back and forth about, and I was trying to look into as well as I was looking into verses and stuff. But um, 
yeah, ultimately that's that's where my inspiration came from. That's already a glimpse into one of the verses that um, I wanted to share today. So let me go ahead and share the rest of these verses. Um, so Amos 3 and 7, it says, For the Lord God does nothing without revealing his secret to his servants and the prophets. Or excuse me, to his servants, the prophets. So, um, you know, again, God is speaking. God is letting us know there are warnings. It's not like, um, again, I think there's probably another reason why it's like, well, I don't, like on one hand, you wonder, well, is it tribulation? But again, as far as I know, there's been no historical account of multiple people disappearing yet. So I think because of that, you know, I would say that it, it's not, you know, um, but hey, I mean, I guess we can all go deeper and seek the Lord about that. But basically, regardless of that, um, it says here plainly that there, you know, the Lord God does nothing without revealing the secrets to his servants, the prophets. So um, God is revealing to us and whatnot um, what is to come. So then we have, uh, do, 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 do. I already shared Acts 2 and 17. Um, you know, again, it, it talks about the sons, the daughters, uh, young men and old, right? Um, different things and giftings. Um, let's go to first Corinthians 14 and 31. It says for you all for, excuse me, for you can all prophesy one by one so that all may learn and be encouraged. So I ended up going deeper uh, with this verse because on one hand, on one hand, it gives the impression that everybody can prophesy um, just by reading that verse by itself. But when I read and you know went deeper and read the verses centered around it and whatnot, um, it's talking about like in the church and you know if pe multiple people receive a revelation, let them speak one by one and and you know so all may learn and, and so they can each you know hold themselves accountable and things like that. Um, you guys can go deeper and read the entire First Corinthians 14 because it talks about speaking in tongues versus prophesying. It talks about, yes, that, that that verse, that controversial verse about women in the church and things like that is in that section as well. Um, but we can all go deeper and, and read that entirety um, or read that in its entirety to get a full understanding. But it really just stood out to me this morning, this idea of um, prophesying one by one so all may learn. Um, stood out of me to share, so there it is. <laughs> then I, um, I came across John 13 and 19. It says, I can, I think, uh, I don't know if I finished writing that right, but y'all can check what the verses say for yourself um, and make sure I'm saying it. But I tell you in this now, I tell you this now before it takes place, that when it does take place, you may believe that I am he. So, um, so I don't know if it's supposed to be I am till in you now. Um, but regardless, y'all, again, y'all can go and confirm that it's John 13 and 19. But basically, um, this is the verse that I just pretty much was thinking about the entire time when I thought about this process of, or when I thought about prophecies, because, um, you know, as a reason why God tells us, again, I believe it's to warn us. I believe it's to, you know, encourage us to repent. I would also believe, according to this, that is um, to help our belief and whatnot when we see things take place. And from my understanding, y'all can go deeper and look into all of this stuff again. Um, GodQuestions.org is a great resource to look into it because um, it talks about, you know, the different prophets and whatnot. But basically, basically. It says that there's thousands of prophecies in the Bible and over half have already been um, fulfilled and everything like that. And so this is another reason why we can believe what the Bible has to say. And, and so, I mean, again, you guys can go deeper. Let all these things marinate on your heart, souls and minds. Um, I hope that you all are encouraged and inspired, like I said, to go deeper and look into this thing about prophecy and warning. Because, I mean, if you find yourself in... The tribulation period and because you somehow somehow came across this i mean well it's not too late for you right um at the end of the day you know you can believe now right and then still be saved um but for those of us that are pre-trib right now and and everything like why not start to trust in the lord now why not do his will now why not follow christ now instead of going through the wrath um that wasn't meant for you and things like that um 
you know, I guess to each their own. Everybody can make their own decision about what they want to do with their life. Again, we all each have free will and things of that nature. Um, but, you know, I'm, I'm looking forward to, you know, um, bypassing some things. You know what I'm saying? I, I, I don't think I would want to be here for the tribulation period. Um, you know, I'm concerned about my son and whatnot. Um, you know, prayerfully, uh, you know, I don't know when it'll happen or how old he'll be and things of that nature. But, you know, as for me and my house, I, I pray, you know, we're going to serve the Lord so we can be, be caught up in the rapture, as they say. Um, and I guess that's the juice, y'all. That's the juice, y'all. Just take heed to some of these prophecies and warnings. Um, go deeper by all means. But here we go. The Bible verse of today is Psalm 3 and 3. It says, but thou, O Lord, art my shield for me, or excuse me, art a shield for me, my glory and lifter up of mine head. Friends, I hope you all enjoyed this juice this morning. Thank you so much for listening to God, Sex, and Love, your daily dose of inspiration, the juice. I pray you guys can go forth and have a wonderful day, and I look forward to talking to you all tomorrow, if the Lord's will. Bye-bye. Are you engaged, married, separated? Friends, don't give up. Let no man separate what God has joined together, not even you. Transform your marriage and your idea of marriage today with Marriage Reignited. This program is a insightful look into marriage and what are the true needs of his and her. You guys can get a discount when you use Miracle Video or Miracle Combo. Miracle Video will get you $5 off of the video. And Miracle Combo will give you $10 off of the video and book. Check out MarriageReunited.com for more information. That's M-A-R-R-I-A-G-E. R E I G N I T E D dot com. And again, that's Miracle Video, M I R A C L E V I D E O, or Miracle Combo, M I R A C L E C O M B O.